serve a loving, wonderful God. Let us pray. Dear most righteous and eternal Father, we thank you for this another blessed Sabbath day that you have bestowed upon us. As we're about to go into your words, we ask your blessing on it. In your name I pray. Amen. The reading comes to us from Patriots and Prophet. Speaking of Abraham, it says, It was no light test that was thus brought upon Abraham, no small sacrifice that was required of him. There were strong ties to bind him to his country, his kindred, and his home. This is speaking to us. We are called to leave and go to the country. But when we step back and look at all the things that we have now and all the accomplishment, we begin to reason out. Is, does God really want us to leave and go to the country who is likely to reason like that who is likely to say you really think God wants us to of the two who is likely to, to be saying that between the husband and the wife who is likely to say that hmm? <laughs> let's just alright just not to get into the trouble, right? Let's just say it, that's why. That's why. And then when Lot's wife begin to raise it that way, the children now who didn't have a choice now begin to side with Lot's wife. And then now it causes a split in the family. Then the priest sees this split and then begin to question God. But God wouldn't want the family to split. And then he begins to reason and no doubt come about. But it's, it's, it says but he did not hesitate to obey the call. Speaking of Abraham, he said Abraham continued to journey southward and again his faith was tested. So all through this country living phase, it's going to be a test for us. The heavens withheld their rain, the brook ceased to flow in the valley, and the grass withered on the plains. The flocks, the herds found no pasture, and starvation threatened the whole encampment. Did not the patriarch now question the leading of providence? Did he not look back with a longing to the plenty of the Chaldean's plain? All were eagerly watching to see what Abraham would do as trouble after trouble came upon him. So you notice, while things was crumbling around Abraham, while things was getting harder and harder, you notice who they looked to? Everyone was looking to? The leader, the patriots. And while they were looking to Abraham, who Abraham was looking to? God. So that's a very important lesson for us. As the priest, you should be looking to God. So when, because you know, Lot, Lot's wife is very emotional, right? She's very emotional. So when she's freaking out, you as the patriots should be all in a firm aid. Cause you, you, you know who you believe in. You know. It's not yourself. You know the God you trust. So you're trusting and you're, you're constantly, your faith constantly remain in God. So when everybody around you is, and, 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 and the thing about that too, someone is always looking to someone to lead. And we are told we should be what? the head and not the tail especially in, 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 in spiritual matter now going back to this whole family thing Lot's wife is complaining and she's doubting and the family is, is falling apart what's the solution as the priest 
the family is literally falling apart because of this decision now the family has to make what is the decision the priest makes what does Matthew says in Matthew it says first Luke Luke 9 36 62 sorry it says and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom so really and truly you know this decision it's going to split a lot of families you know? it's go it, there's no doubt about it it's going to split a lot of family worse if mommy and daddy spiritually they're not on the same level it's going to cause a split it's it's should i say it's sad is it sad but the reality is god has spoken and we must follow the leading right so long as his confidence appeared unshaken they felt that there was hope they were assured that god was his friend and that he was still guiding him abraham could not complain the leading of providence he had not realized his expectation but he held fast the promise i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing with earnest prayer he considered how to preserve the life of his people and his flock but he would not allow circumstances to shake his faith in god's word to escape the famine he went down into egypt he did not forsake canaan or in his extremity turned back to chaldean land from which he came where there was no scarcity of bread but he sought a temporary refuge as near as possible to the land of promise intending shortly to return to where god has placed him so nothing and this confidence in abraham it did not came about at this point it is over the years he's been trusting in god he knew what god had done for him in time past for us if our faith is not being exercised just like the muscle it won't grow so if we don't have experience to look back at, at it's going to be very hard for us to trust god when trouble arises and trust me we know it's been repeated daily daily what is to come upon us it's no light matter so if we don't have the faith like christ we're going to turn back and come right back into the city the lord in his providence had brought this trial upon abraham to teach him lessons of submission patience and faith lessons that were to be placed on records for the benefit of all who should afterwards be called to endure affliction inspiration says that the things that are written it wasn't written so much for them it was written for us and the bible also said the things that are written is for what? our examples god leads his children by a way that they know not but he does not forget or cast off those who put their trust in him he permitted affliction to come upon job but he did not forsake him he allowed the beloved john to be exiled to a lowly patmos but the son of god met him there and his vision was filled with scenes of immortal glory god permit trials to assail his people that by their constant obedience they themselves may be spiritually enriched and that their example may be a source of strength to others you know the bible says in everything we must give thanks 
Bible saying everything must give thanks, right? So how can we give thanks in sickness? Remember I say now, God bring his people what? To trials, to what? Test their faith, to perfect them. So in everything we must give thanks because we know that they're trying of our, of our faith as I wrapped up. It says the very trial that tasks our faith most severely and make it seem that God has forsaken us are to lead us closer to Christ that we may lay all our burdens at his feet and experience the peace which he will give us in our exchange. So as we go through our pilgrim journey, let us trust God. Because really and truly, we have nothing else. I can't help you as much as you can't help me. So it is God alone. But we should encourage each other along the way. Let us pray. Dear most righteous and eternal Father, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath day that you have given unto us so that we could worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for sparing our life throughout this past week. Many would have started but didn't have the opportunity to finish. And so we come before you this morning. We thank you, we magnify you, we lift you up because you are indeed worthy. We ask, O oh God, that you increase our faith. No matter what the trials, the temptation comes our way, help us, Lord, to trust in you. Help us, Lord, to have that faith. Because you said in your words, he that loseth his life for your sake will find it. So I pray, Lord, help us to count the cost to suffer for you, no matter what this situation is. Help us, O oh God, to suffer for you, because we know in the end it will work for our good. We ask for your blessing through the remaining portion of this Sabbath. Whatever we would have failed of asking, fail not to grant it unto us. These are not the mercies we do ask in no other name, but in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus. Amen.